Godric, a novel by Frederick Beekner. Chapter 1. Of Godric, his friends, and Reginald. Five friends I had, and two of them snakes. Toon and Fairweather they were, thick round as a man's arms. My bedmates and playfellows, keepers of my skimped hearth and hermit's heart, till in a grim pet I bade them go that day, and never more to come again, never more to hiss their snake love when they saw me drawing near, or coil themselves for warmth about my shaggy legs. They went. They never came again. I spied them now and then, puddling my way home like a drowned man from dark weir, with my bullocks shriveled to bean size in their sack, and the old one eye scarce a barnacle's length clear of my belly, and crying a mercy. It was him as I sought in freezing weir to teach a lesson that he never learned, nor has to this day learned though wiser, you'd think, for sixty winters dunking in bone-chilling treacherous weir. Not him. I would spy my gentle tune and watchdog, Firetooth Fairweather, watching me as still as death in the long grass or under a stone as I hide home sodden on cracked feet. But none of us ever let on that we were seeing what we saw until we saw no longer. I miss them no more or hardly do, past most such sweet grieving, now at age above a hundred, if I've got time straight for once. For old Godric's now more dead than quick, a pile of dark rags left to steam and scorch now by the fire. It's the missing them now I miss. That's two. The third was Roger Mouse, as stout of heart and limb, as foul of mouth, plowing the stormy seas for pilferer prize. He had an eye out ever for the willing maids, and no matter to Mouse were they flaxen-locked Dane or black Spaniard, old as earth or cherry ripe for the plucking. No matter to Mouse if the deck was awash and storm in the rigging, he'd play with them at diddly dumb the weather be damned and cared not a pin that the eyes of the oars were upon them. What a man was Mouse, what a sinner too was Mouse, but none was ever a fonder friend. And what with all the man's great mirth, there was less room left in him for truly mortal sin than in your landlocked penny-pinching chapman, working their cheerless stealth at the fairs where we peddled. We had rabbit fur, goose feather, beeswax, calfskin, garlic, and gods galore. We'd load them cheap the one place and unload them dear the other for any fat rump mistress or dung foot pilgrim with cockles in his hat that had the pence to squander. We grew rich till one fine day the saint a spirit was ours with her sharp prow that sliced the waves like cheese. Mouse stood so high he said it blew the caps off men who stood astern when he broke wind. Godric was the captain helmsman, with a canny nose for weather, and Captain Mouse was Godric's charm against the evil eye, for, mark you, Mouse's sin smacked less of evil than of larkishness, the likes of which our lord himself could hardly help but wink at, when he spied it out in whore and prodigal. I loved Mouse. Together we saved a Christian king from infidels, and not a silver coin to split between us for our pains. Years afterwards, two hundred miles and more away in my dry hut, I saw a mouse in the eye of my heart go down with the saint of spirit off the Welsh rocks. He cried out the only name he knew me by, which was not Godric, and in the ear of my heart I heard him, helpless. Aelred was forth. They say as a babe he reared up like a lily in his tub, and spoke the paternoster through, nor would take of his mother's teat for the forty days and nights of Lent save Sabbaths. He grew to a sheaf of bones made fast round the middle with a monk's rope. The Pictish king of Galloway was the devil fleshed. He had the gold eyes of a toad and a forked beard. On cold nights he'd slit a slave's belly open like a sack so he could dabble his feet in the warm bowels. He tied together the limbs of women in labor for sport and drank blood. Ilred went to him. Throned on a rock, the king was pickling his teeth with the bone of a weasel, when Aelred knelt and watered his shins with tears. They say a light went forth from Aelred that then that blinded the king's gold eyes, and a creature was seen passing forth out of the king, hung all over with bottles of the blood he'd drunk. And the king swore holy faith from that day on, and took him the name of Aelred for his own. Thus, with no loss of seed or purity, my friend got him a son that day upon the rock, and Jesu, a forkbeard, pictish knight, though blind as a bat from that day on.
Aylred himself they made af abbot after a time at Rivo, where so great was his meekness, the fat monks vied with each other to try it, till one day one of them, finding him flat in a swoon from an attack of the stone, plucked him up as weighed no more than the weight of his thin bones and cast him onto the fire. But Aylred forgave him, wouldn't you know? He'd let them harm no hair of the monk's head for the mischief he'd done nor was Aylred himself so much as singed. He visits me from time to time. You'd never take him for holy. He smells of fish, his smock hiked up to his hips, and his long legs lank as a heron's as he picks his way along the banks of Weir, coughing his fearsome cough. Peace, Godric, he says. He's all bones, Godric's all rags. They kneel there hours on end under the low thatch without a word to clutter the silence, save for the prayers they heave heavenward braided together like a hawser, the better to hoist the world a cat's whisker out of the muck. Only once did he do me a bad turn, and that was from love, as many a bad turn's been done from before. He sent me, Reginald. To put your life on parchment, Godric, Aylred says, his coughs like the splitting of wood. To unbushel the light of your days for the schooling of children, to set them a path to follow. Did he but know where Godric's path has led, or what sights his light has lit, he'd bushel me back fast enough. I've told Mother Reginald tales to rattle his beads and blush his fish belly tonsure pink as a babe's bum, but he turns them all to triacle with his scratching quill. I scoop out the jakes of my remembrance, and he senses it all with his clerkish screed till it reeks of mass. He brings me broth and plover's eggs. He freshens my straw when I foul it. If some dream shipwrecks me at night, he's there with his taper to beacon me safe to shore. Just the sight of his sheep face gives me the cramp. I lie with my eyes rolled back to the whites, and my jaws agape so he'll think I'm a corpse before he's dug his book from me. Often I speak to him only with the tongue of my hands, which he does not understand. I have taught rats to run over him in the dark, but I suffer him for it was lowly, gentle, dark-eyed Aylred sent him. The fifth was Gillian. I met her on a Roman hill with Aedwin, my mother, drowsing at my side. She journeyed in our pilgrim band. At each day's end she'd bathe my feet. She crept beneath my cloak. I have forgotten my father's face. I have forgotten my own face when I was young. By God's mercy, some day I will forget Reginald's face, but her face I'll remember ever. Gillian, I will not forget. That's five friends, one for each of Jesus' wounds, and Godric bears their mark still on what's left of him, as in their time they all bore his on them. What's friendship when all's done but the giving and taking of wounds? When Godric banished Fairweather and Toon, they all three bled for it, and part of Godric snaked off to nevermore to come again. And it's Godric's flesh that Aelred's cough cleaves like an axe. And when brave Mouse went down off Wales, he bore to the bottom the cut of Godric's sharp farewell. And when Gillian vanished in a Dover wood, she took with her all but the husk of Godric's joy. Gentle Jesu, Mary's son, be thine wounds that heal our wounding. Press thy bloody scar to ours, that thy dear blood may flow in us and cleanse our sin. Be thou in us, and we in thee, that Godric, Gillian, Aelred, Mouse, and thou, may be a woundless one at last, and even Reginald, if thy great mercy reach so far. In God's name, Godric prays. Amen.